bringing the people behind our food to life. We've been picking over the course of the last week. This is our last day. I think people who have any kind of farming interest at all that get involved in the wine business eventually gravitate to, I want to be a grower. I want to, I want to grow my own wine grapes and make my own wine. And, and that was my passion. And so I had the, the good opportunity in 1989 to set foot on this place. And uh, we owned it in less than a year. So it was Providence. I was raised in Eugene, Oregon, which we like to call back then Berkeley North. Um, very, very liberal, very progressive. Um, I spent a good deal of my, frankly, high school and college years uh, deeply involved with environmental movements. And so when we bought the farm, <laughs> quite literally, I wanted to farm in that manner. So without really saying I'm an organic farmer or I'm a biodynamic farmer or whatever, we just set about trying to use softer approaches. Uh, today, uh, we picked our oldest vines here at Resonance, including our oldest Pinot Noir. All that fruit went to two producers, Big Table Farm, uh, where they, they make their wine now in Amity. They will make vineyard-designated Pinot Noir uh, off from that fruit. The majority of the fruit went to Chinan, which is a much larger winery based in Newburgh. And Peter will make a resonance Pinot Noir uh, under the Chinan label. And he'll also make a Gewurz from what came off of here today. He'll make a resonance uh, Gewurz. I'm looking at juice statistics. What is my bricks level? What is my acid level? What is my uh, yan level, yeast assemblable nitrogen level? And we're looking at those pretty keenly. But perhaps more importantly, we're looking for physiologically ripe fruit. Th these plants, their, in their intention is to produce viable seed. Okay? They happen to encase that seed in this beautiful, sweet thing that we call a grape. But the whole purpose, really, of the grape is to ensure that animals, primarily birds, will eat those grapes and then fly around and spread their seeds uh, through their feces. Um, and so we want ripe seeds. We want viable seeds because I think that's sort of the end point of the intention of the vine. So we'd like to see brown or spotted seeds that, that if they were to go fall on the ground would be viable and could sprout into a grapevine. Beyond that, we're looking for flavor. We taste the grapes constantly uh, as we go up to the making the final picking day decision. I, I wrote something to somebody recently. I said, we, we understand that no two winemakers make exactly the same wine from the same batch of fruit. But I would take that a step further and something you don't hear discussed very often is no two growers would grow the same fruit off the same piece of ground. And, and what I mean by that is there is a powerful influence of human intentionality, intention and attention, if you will, uh, in, in growing any crop that, that has a signature on what comes off of the property. We, we seem to have come to the mindset in the grape growing community that, oh, it's all an expression of place. And I think that's very true, but it's also an expression of the person that's growing it or the, the entity that's growing it. Um, and, and I think if somebody else were farming this land, the fruit would be somewhat different. Um, uh, I don't know exactly what that is because I haven't given anybody else the opportunity to do that. But um, there, it will happen. I won't, these wines will last longer than me. Maybe it'll be my son. Maybe it'll be my daughter and son-in-law. Maybe it'll be somebody I don't even know. But I'm quite certain that what they would come up with here is going to be somewhat different than what I come up with. The, the joy that I get is to see what different winemakers come up with with the fruit that's pretty much the same when I deliver it to them. Well, 
Yeah. I don't know what's around the corner. Uh, uh, I'm I'm always seeking. I read things that I think most people would go, you're kidding me. I read university research studies. Uh, Lord knows, maybe this afternoon somebody will, will uh, drop me a nugget that will influence how I farm next year. I don't do it the same uh, year in and year out. Never have. As uh, a matter of fact, my wife, I think, finds that a little frustrating. Why don't we just do it the way we did it last year? Worked. Um, and part of that for me is, well, it's not very interesting. And two, it could be better. Um, and so it's always uh, an effort to stay just a hair ahead of, uh, do it a little bit better than last year, uh, do a little bit better than the year before that. Uh, and to me, that's, that's why I get up in the morning, do it better. It's really a three-legged stool. We need to work through all of the various disciplines, not just biodynamics, not just organics, not just conventional, to a study that brings us to growing better food.